Yeah, hello everyone. You're welcome back to the second part of this edition of Music Business Intelligence. And we want to thank Pastor Kuredi Adams for everything he has shared so far. Man, wow. The church has a big role to play. And he's, he said a lot of things that, you know, you just need to know your what. Don't turn that stone to bread. Don't turn the stone to bread. Don't wait for your time. Because at the right time, you understand, you are going to, you know, experience that turnaround. And then we are talking about the role of church. Oh, Shogetosh, thank you. I can see Shogetosh in the building. Shogetosh in the building, thanks. That's one of our facilitators, you know, about two weeks ago. A great veteran in the music industry too. Thank you very much for joining. So, Pastor Kuredi Adams is going to be joining us soon. Very powerful session. So, this is the second part. And Pastor Kuredi is going to be joining us again. Wow. Very nice addition. Yeah, I'm bringing him up. I hope we don't have an H this time around. Wow. Okay. So, Pastor Kuredi has said a lot, you know, about the role of the church. You know, the church, you know, there is no how you can grow your music these days without gospel music. Gospel music is a major part, you understand, of the growth of the church. And that's what Pastor Kuredi Adam, you know, the first part was so insightful. And we are coming to the second part. We still have so many questions for Pastor Kuredi. <laughs> Adams. <laughs> oh, Shogitosh and the beauty. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Luisa. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone of, of you for joining. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm bringing Pastor Kredi up right now. Yeah. Uh, for the second part of this music, we want to know the role of the church you understand in promoting gospel music what are the roles of the church in promoting gospel music and he has said a lot and i can say that gospel music is very very key to the growth of any church he said something he said look at the number of followers that we have you understand even for gospel artists you know look at the past you understand compared to pastors was saying they, they are massive. And you know, by the time you now you consider even uh, secular artists, many of them have a lot of influence. They shape the culture, you know, of the society and yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. So you will not believe that my my other device my other phone that couldn't connect the first time is the one that is on now. I don't know. The devil is in trouble. <laughs> Double trouble. I'm I don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> so I just it's said that, like something that people need to hear that the devil is just trying to uh, <laughs> <laughs> find a wow, way of good to be back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me back. <laughs> All right. So my quest next question for you is, is that do you think the church can really get seriously involved in the in the business of music? I want to look at okay, maybe I can mention I look at the like of uh, Christ Embassy, for instance, Love Lord. I see the way the church really built those gospel artists, they have like record label, love world records, you know, TV, and they try to push their artists out there, and many of them have become international brand today. So, and one thing I think is that if a model is working, you understand, it could be replicated. So, do you think, That's right. do you think the church has a big role to play? Because I look at that church and I look at some other churches too that I look at what uh, uh, experience, for instance, is a platform that every artist all over the world want to be part of. So when I look at what some of these you know, churches did, I realize that is a, they, they are good model, which could be replicated. Having a, a kind of record label, because most of these artists that go into the world, most of the time, 
they, they some believe that the church is not supporting enough. So, and I believe that if the church could give a lot of support in this regard, it's going to pay off. It's definitely going to pay off because look at what is happening in, in you know among the artists in in Christ Embassy, for instance. You know, we have them making global impact just because a kind of structure was put in place. So, what do you think the church can do to replicate this kind of model in the business of music and ensuring that you know, gospel artists could minister cross-culturally and make global impact. Yeah, like um, like you said, structure, systems and structure is everything. Yeah. Um, Christ Embassy got it right because they were able to build and develop a system. It took time. Hmm. The same Christ Embassy that artists Every artist, I mean, I, I see artists literally leaving their churches to join Christ Embassy <laughs> because everybody's looking for where you get the right platform. And I don't blame them. Yeah. Um, that's how life is. You go to where something is happening. Yeah. You don't want to be in a church where the pastor tells you it's not by music, it's not by singing. If you hear that and you are a part of a church, then you know that, wow, you are uh, an accident going somewhere to happen. <laughs> At the same time, <laughs> it's a process. I mean, I remember when artists were leaving Christ Embassy. As I'm speaking to you, I can recall a couple of artists that I used to know <laughs> because it took a while for Christ Embassy the first time Sinaj was going to be ministering outside of Christ Embassy, yeah. after 20 years of singing in Christ Embassy, mm. only in Christ Embassy, mm. I was at the first church. Mm. The first church Sinaj preached, I mean Sinaj ministered outside of Christ Embassy was, was Commonwealth of Zion Assembly. And I remember that I was in that service. It wasn't like I was told. She said it at the dinner table and said, hey, it's my first time. Of course, I knew already it was her first time. It was a surprise. People never believed it was going to be because nobody saw her on any platform in 20 years. Hmm. You hmm. see, the church has a responsibility. Hmm. The artists too have a responsibility. Wow. There were several people. I remember Sinach saying that people insulted her. People said to her, you are destroying, you are wasting the weight. They said to her, she said many times some of her friends looked at her and said, see your life. Hmm. You have devoted the most part of your life. You know, she got married late. Yeah. Everybody thought, oh, ah, in fact, there were all kinds of stories and rumors. You know, because that's how people are. Sometimes to be able to make a statement, <laughs> you, you are going to be misunderstood. Mm. Because Christ Embassy was misunderstood. Mm. There were stories, there were rumors, there were misconceptions, and there were several artists who could not wait for that change. I can imagine that Pastor Chris must have shared the vision. You guys wait, it's just a matter of time. But who is ready to wait? Because everybody wanted their ministry and their gospel ministry to be out in a hurry. What I would say generally is I found out that most artists that are doing well now grew out of a church system. Mm. Look at the artists that are doing well in Nigeria today yeah. and across the world. Yeah. They, are, they grew out of the church system. You, you need that church system as a springboard. And that's why we pray we need to do a lot more awareness. We need to speak to, uh, uh, we, we need pastors to talk to pastors. Hmm. We need pastors because sometimes if a gospel artist is trying to advise a pastor, hmm. I mean, there's something wrong in that order because that pastor you are talking to is probably your spiritual father. Hmm. And then you are trying to advise him. Even though you have a point, sometimes he needs to hear it from another pastor to say, hey, this is the David's order of worship that God approved. The only other worship 
He said, I'm going to raise up again and it's going to be an eternal king. Yeah. We cannot overemphasize the importance of the music ministry. And I'm telling you, whether the church is ready to go along with it or not, with COVID-19 and post-COVID-19, everybody already have, everybody has a platform right now. Yeah. And that's another side to it that I want to share that I would like to, if we have time, to encourage gospel artist. Now you have a platform. Yeah. Now you have your own church, quote and unquote. Hmm. Because before now, nobody, there's no platform if a church door does not open. Hmm. But now the doors of church buildings are closed. But hmm. it does not shut the door to our ministries and to our expression. This is a very good time. Get on social media. Get on Facebook. We're hmm. always, you that observes the wind shall not sow. Hmm. That this is, you now have a platform. You might have 200 followers that are church. Some of the churches you are going to, you, you are dying to minister only have 200 members. Hmm. Because hmm. we defined ourselves with the physical building, not knowing that we have limited ourselves by such definitions. Hmm. Now, the, uh, the rules of engagement, the rules have changed. Hmm. There is a paradigm shift. The platform is not indoors anymore. It's outdoors. Mm. Look at, learn from the secular, what is going on in the secular world. Yeah. You couldn't be a comedian if you didn't have a stage. Mm. That was then. Yeah. The upcoming comedians today don't have a stage. Mm. They just have a platform on social media. That's right. The likes of Latuti Eleno, the likes of Josh Tufoni. Josh Tufoni came on CNN mm. for doing the uh, uh, the uh, Don't Leave Me Challenge. Mm. He did, he does not have, he didn't have to wait. So there's a, we are moving from that, we are moved, not moving, we are moved from the actual to the virtual. Mm. From the actual to the, the virtual. virtual we have moved from the actual to the virtual, and the virtual has more influence right now than the actual, because mm. the virtual has now become the new actual. Mm. What am I trying to say? I want to challenge every gospel artist. Before, you couldn't do anything if you didn't have a church door open. Now, even pastors don't have their church, their doors open. <laughs> Not yet. So everybody is is out of church building, you know, uh, for the time being. And the interesting thing is that we may not go back perfectly to that normal. Yeah. Things are not going to remain the same. I am telling you. Mm. We have to embrace it, and then we have to engage it. Mm. Every artist should get on Facebook, get on Instagram, put your song on Instagram. And you know, the secret of, inst of, of social media is consistency. Yeah. yeah. It might be the two, the 500 posts that we explode you. You don't know which one. Mm -hmm. So in the morning, sow your seat, put up something. In the evening, don't withhold your hand. Just mm -hmm. keep doing it. There's a song, tag the right people. And you can do it. You can now create your own audience, you can determine your own platform. Because the world is now everyone's parish. The world is our parish mm -hmm. right now. We don't need one church building to open before we do what we got to do. Yeah. But I notice there are people who are still waiting for the door of the church to open so that they can get a platform to me and say, hey, you have the best platform. From here, you are just a shot away to the world. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. You can put up a post and the president of America will watch it. The mm. queen of England can watch your post tomorrow that you put up now. Why don't you just do what you got to do? There's a change in dynamics and we've got to recognize that. In as much as we recognize that the springboard for gospel music is the church, but the church now is not what we used to think it is. The mm. church now is no more a building. Mm. But the building of people. Mm. 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 The dynamics have changed. 
I would have to recognize that. Wow. Thank you so much. Because truly, 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 there are a lot of people that have made a lot of impact now, even on social media. You know, they have a lot of followership and they could reach more people even than what the church, you know, can, can actually do. Yeah. Things are happening. You see, don't wait until the end result before you get on the chariot. Don't mm -hmm. wait until it arrives. Yeah. Nobody bought a plane that's already taken off. It's mm -hmm. not possible. If you don't board it while it's still on ground, it will be too late once it takes off. Yeah. Everybody needs to check in because there's a boarding right now. There's a boarding right now. Even pastors, we need to check in. Hmm. Some new pastors are going to take over the existing ones who have refused to board this online. It's, we, are not, we are not traveling by road anymore. We have gone airborne. Hmm. The, I'm telling you, the platform is not on ground anymore. Hmm. The platform is on board. Hmm. Now, the difference between road trip and flight is that you can stop the car, but you can't stop the plane. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you mm. can meet the car in the next bus stop, mm. but you can't stop the plane. Yeah. And the internet is not a road trip. Mm. It's a flight. Mm. Everybody needs to check in, needs to get on board right now. If you, do, if you don't board Right now, you are going to miss the flight. We are not, we are no more on the cat trip. We are not traveling on ground anymore. We are airborne. Mm. And the danger of being airborne or flight is that planes don't stop on the road to pick people up. Of course, we have connected flights. But what I am saying is, this is the time. Make sure you still have time right now. There are people behind you that are yet to catch up. So take advantage of it. There mm. are people who are still trying to see how this thing works. This is the time you can launch your album on Instagram. You can launch it on Zoom. You can launch it on Facebook. This is time to put something out there. This world is so taken by what they are seeing. You see, people spend hours, every you and I, and the rest of the people in this generation spend most of their time on this phone. Mm. Well, we will go back to church building, but it will never remain the same. That's true. The influence of the building is dropping, and I promise you, it's not going to be business as usual anymore. Mm. We are no more on ground, we're online. <laughs> so get online. Stop waiting. Don't stay on ground for the door of the church building to open. You better get on board. Mm. Mm. And how do I get on board? Connect with people. Yeah. Put your song there. It might just be five people. I have seen people, you know, you know, many of us, those who observe the wind, they don't sow. That's you true. come online, you, you, you are intimidated by the person who has 500, 1,000, 5,000 views, not knowing that nobody started with 5,000 views. Yeah. Everything begins from zero. The bottom. <laughs> Except, except grave digging and well digging. Yeah. The only thing to start from the top is when you are going, when you are digging a grave yeah. or when you are digging a well. Every <laughs> other thing, you start from the bottom and then you take it off. Mm -hmm. So, you know what you got to do? Your five views is powerful. Just keep doing it. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, keep doing it. I have seen people with five views, ten views, and because of consistency, mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, if the cloud be full of water, it empties itself upon the earth. Watch mm. this. Have you ever seen the cloud gather water? No. We only see when it, when it pours water. Mm. And science tells us, which is also in the Bible, that the water that falls as rain came from the ground. But when it's gathering water through evaporation, we don't see it. Mm. It's when it unleashes itself on the earth that we see that rain is coming from heaven. But that water came from time from a process gathering. This is the time to gather your water in the cloud. Mm. This is time to upload. Upload. Mm. Upload a song. Upload a, a line of your music. When I see most of my sons and daughters who are in the music industry, uh, ministry, I'm telling them, look at you. 
What did you do throughout lockdown? Did you learn anything that would position you online? Mm. You stayed at home for three months because there's no choir rehearsal, because nobody's inviting you. You are not doing anything. You are not putting up a song on a daily basis. You don't have to sing your own song. Sing other people's song. Yeah. In fact, one of the best ways to gain ground is to do album cover. Mm. Get a song that everybody likes. Then repeat that song. Mm. Use your own weapon on that song, like David did. Mm. And then you will stand out. And you may not be accepted. You may not, be, you may not get a lot of light to start with. But if the cloud be full of water, it will empty itself. It's just a matter of time. Mm. Now, the opportunities are more, interestingly. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. Oh, somebody's thinking, how am I going to make money coming online? You see, everything, every influence always become money. Mm. Every influence will always turn to money. Mm. When artists started going to churches to minister, they were not getting money. It just, at a point in time, it now became money. Someone is asking, no, I should just set up, look for a way to get online. How are they going to pay me? They don't give on the online. <laughs> I'm telling you, they give. Is You'll find out. Hmm. Because everywhere there's an attraction of people, that's where money flows in the direction of people. Mm. Once you get people audience, you will get money, which is the business of the business of the business of the music ministry. You see, every ministry, everything that is blessing other lives will be rewarded. It's just a matter of time. Mm. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. This is, this is really eye-opening. Eye-opening. I, I still have more questions for you, and the next question I'm going to ask is, yeah, you know, we have a situation whereby musicians, you know, want to do music professionally. And they are Christian. Some of them even study this music, you know, and they are very good at their craft. And we realize that some of them still sneak out to go and play for, you know, some of these secular musicians. And, you know, they still want to minister in the church and the perspective is that they are, it's like they are bringing strange fire you understand to the church yeah oh so, what's your perspective about this some of them their complaint is that they are not well paid or well remunerated in the church and so they and they need to make ends meet they need to feed their family they need to feed themselves uh, but the renovation is not enough, and that's the only thing they know how to do, music. And they are professionals. So, how can the church help out in this regard, and what's your, what's your take on this? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm very I'm very practical okay. when it comes to this. I've seen people who play gigs and they come to play church. Number one, I don't despise them. Okay. We just need to have an understanding. And I'm not saying that that is the best thing to do. Hmm. It might be the necessity. Hmm. It may not necessarily be the ultimate. Hmm. And I try to appreciate what everyone is going through at every point. Imagine a man who has developed a career in music before he even got into church. And he has been doing stops in the secular that he's been putting food on his table. Mm. And it's not necessarily a compromise. Mm. It's just a job. He's producing, he's directing, he's playing, he gets his money. He doesn't smoke, he doesn't do all of that. He tries to manage it or he deals with it. And and you tell him, no, quit and come and trust God. And he's under a pastor who doesn't believe in paying salaries mm -hmm. to musicians. You want to destroy him. Mm -hmm. He has to go through that process. What I mean is, I'm not going to tell him to leave, to quit his job. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to show him the bigger picture. Hmm. I will show him that there's a Levitical order that covers people in the music industry. The Lord is your portion in the land of the living. That doesn't mean you should jump to that land. There may not be food yet for you there. But have an understanding. We need to put the bigger picture to say, you know what? God can take care of you. There are examples of people who are devoted and they have received uh, the, the, the call of God in, on, in, on their lives in the area of music and they're able to believe God to make ends meet. But you see, that may not be the story. It's not the end of everyone because we are at different points in our lives. Someone is still going through a process. Don't criticize it. Hmm. I don't preach against musicians who still play outside of the church walls because I just try to put them through because some of them are dealing, are, are, are under the influence. They are dealing with it. But you see someone, other people who have been able to separate it because there are dangers and music is very sensitive. It's always very difficult to separate the vocation from the occasion. Very difficult to separate the vocation from the occasion. Because of how interwoven music is. It's a social platform. So it's, there's a limit to which you can handle it professionally without getting mixed up. Mm. Because you have to mix with people. You have to talk to people. And it exposes you to all, to the, to the three Gs. Of the gold, the girls, and the glory. The music platform package exposes you to the three things. If gospel artists who are singing in church have issues with these three things, how much more those who are in a more dangerous terrain? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a, a, a platform that only a few survive. Mm -hmm. I'd rather prefer that everyone in the church who has a music ministry, mm -hmm. I'd rather that they do it completely as unto the Lord and God is able to make all grace abound. But you see, that statement is the ultimate. There's still a process for us to get there. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand. But anyone who is going through that process, you see the big picture. This is what the perfect will of God is. But this might be permissive for now or acceptable for now. But that's not the perfect. The perfect is when you are totally committed and totally devoted. I have seen people who have tried to do, tried to do secular music, being Christians, uh, uh, fall into the trap of the occasion while trying to carry out their vocation. Hmm. Because it's sensitive. Very. Absolutely. I mean, let's let's get real, because you are dealing with the uh, the the devil does not play with entertainment, because that's one of the strongest. Is one of the mountains mm. of influence, and is one of the strongest mountain of influence that other mountains cannot do without. You can't advertise your product without music. That's true. You can't campaign for election without. Every other mountain would require this mountain. And so there's a contention of that mountain. So if there are one, if there are three demons on this mountain, there are 21 on, on the music mountain because of the influence. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. So another question that I would like to Show to you is that you know this this is something that normally bother bother me bother me bothers me personally and I realize that church when we go to some birthday parties we go to uh, marriage ceremonies they play some of this I'm talking of church members not not just any 
born again spirit field. You know, they play some ignoble music that even when you look at the content and the wordings, it's not edifying or, or glorifying God. And this bothers me a lot that is the church doing enough to... Because when I'm talking about the church now, I'm not even talking about the pastors only. I'm not talking... I'm talking, about, I'm talking church, about... Yeah, the, the church, church body. Yeah, the church, the church body. In the yeah. yeah. So, and I, I don't know. Is there a way this order could be corrected? Because I just believe that the only way church can encourage at least gospel artists, at least play their songs when you are doing occasions. But I realize that even church prefer to listen to some of this ignoble music, songs that do not edify one. Well, maybe because they said they love the beat, you understand? And they love to play such in their parties, either wedding, naming ceremony, you know, everything. And I think it's not encouraging for gospel artists. Is there anything the gospel artists are doing wrong? Is there a way to correct this? What do you think the take of the church should be? Let, let me tell you. Let me let me start by saying it like this, Brother Kim. Yeah. If you um you you were an unbeliever before, right? <laughs> yes. If you were an unbeliever and you used to drink, yeah. Probably you used to drink um beer. Yeah. Coke will never be a substitute for beer. Mm. I'm coming, I'm, I'm going somewhere. Okay. Because beer is alcohol. Coke is sweet. It's not alcoholic. Mm. We are driven towards the kind of sound that resonates with the nature of corruption of the flesh that is still in everybody, even the believer. Let me tell you, mm. there are Christian songs. I mean, I've seen some Christians do songs with secular styles, mm. and it still does not feel the same as the secular songs because have you realized that the flesh resonates with corruption everywhere it's that's true. That's true. Those vulgar, those terrible, extreme words that those guys use when they sing, there's something it does to the flesh because as face answer to face in water, there is a sin potential. We are in the flesh. Yeah. Even if you are the Pope, there's a particular sound that the body of the Pope will respond to <laughs> Even <laughs> right at the Coventry. <laughs> I am telling you. <laughs> now, I'm going somewhere. Okay. Now, this is it. Our response to secular music is the flesh. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. It's temptation because we are drawn to the things of the world because there's a worldliness. Mm. The flesh lost against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. Yeah. And that's why music is very powerful. I personally, at the very, I got saved very tender at, at a very young age. Mm. And I thank God for it. But my biggest struggle was music, secular music. Mm. And I prayed it was my biggest struggle. Mm. To, not to play, not to listen to Lana Ritchie, not to respond to Michael Jackson. Those were my stars. <laughs> I mean, when I had that back in the days, you know, man. <laughs> And everybody's singing it. When the song is played, even sometimes when I pray in the Holy Ghost, I just find myself just moving to it. Oh my God. That's how powerful music influence is. It's, it's, it's as bad as drug addiction. Yeah. And what it does to the soul. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's face the reality. Mm -hmm. And many times, when you see Christians respond to secular music, don't explain it. Don't use the occasion. Mm. 
to justify the commitment. You have always wanted it. You just need you just needed an occasion. Mm -hmm. As occasion, you, you are just playing on the occasion. You have always had it. If you are not into it, it will not every man is drawn. Mm -hmm. Every man is tempted by the things that he naturally has got a flair for. Mm -hmm. If you are attracted to 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 slim ladies, you cannot be tempted by a big woman. Mm. it is so there are tendencies that's the truth number two gospel music spiritual songs don't appeal to the flesh mm. spiritual songs don't appeal to the flesh they appeal to the spirit because they are spiritual mm. and when the flesh is hungry you will not be looking for spiritual. Nobody has ever been hungry before and then you go and get the Bible. Say, what are you doing? Say, I'm just hungry. I just feel like, since man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. You see, <laughs> if you are physically hungry, you go for real food. Mm -hmm. And this flesh is hungry sometimes for sin. That's why Paul says, I put my body under. Mm -hmm. So we've got to be deliberate about it. Another side to it is, of course, uh, uh, the gospel, and you see, the church music is getting better, getting more uh, diversified. Yeah, yeah. That's the truth. But let me tell you, we can never compete with secular music. You know why? Because we are on different terrain. Someone asked, between the hippopotamus and the lion, which one will you, is like comparing a sea lion to a ground lion. No. And say which one is stronger. It depends on where they are fighting. Mm. Mm. One of the mistakes we make is we want to compete with the devil in his own terrain. You cannot win. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, no matter how anointed Daniel was, he can only be prime minister. He will never be. He was. He would not have ever been king of Babylon. No matter how good you are, you can't be the king of Babylon. Mm. Because the Babylonian system will not allow you, no matter how smart you are. Mm. Mm. So we've got to understand. We cannot, you know, uh, uh, there's a difference between uniformity and conformity. Mm. One of our challenge is that we are trying to be uniform. Mm. Not to conform. Uniformity is important for us to be able to influence. But conformity is a challenge. That while you are trying to establish uniformity, I see some gospel artists, they, they are stars. They, they, have a, they feel they are in competition with secular artists. No, we cannot compete mm. because we are, we are, our terrains are different. Mm. For you to be able to make your gospel music have the kind of flesh appeal that secular music has, you have to swear. Mm. You have to use some languages. Mm. And mm. if you want your gospel video to have the kind of appeal, emotional appeal, that the secular video has, then your sisters would have compromised mm. in the way they dress. Yeah. Mm. What makes a secular video? Mm. Scandalous exposure. Yeah. Sex. Mm. You cannot separate music from sex and mm. sex from music. Mm. Because erotism is musically enhanced. Mm. So we've got to understand. We have to know who we are. And we should know that no matter what we try to do, I can never be a secular artist. Mm. I can never try to compete Dove, with a secular artist. Dove, we Dove, are Dove, a, it's a sea lion and a ground lion. Our mm. terrains are different. Let's mm. not try. A gospel artist should not try to be like a secular artist. No, mm. we are different. Mm. <laughs> mm. 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 It may look like beer. It might be green bottle. Mm -hmm. It can have foam. But if he doesn't have the alcohol, he cannot be there. 
<laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> this We're not true. supposed to be competing. <laughs> <laughs> we're supposed to understand that we're different. Personally, yes. I am not into secular music because I had struggle as a young boy and I knew how powerful the, the influence of secular music was. Mm. And I prayed and disciplined myself to be able to come out of it. So I'm not going back there. Mm. And you see, we have to be careful. I've seen pastors who fans it with secular artists. The mm. danger... I don't have a problem with a pastor who is taking picture. It, it started from America. Hmm. I don't have a problem with a, a pastor who is posing with a secular artist whose song has led so many lives astray. Hmm. What the pastor may not understand is that church members start where we stop. Hmm. Hmm. You only took a picture on the walkway with the mm. artist. You only took a picture at the mall with the artist. Your church member will go to the club. Mm. Because there are things we approve just by a picture, just by a statement. You know, that is the danger of followership and the challenge of, of leadership. Mm. That when we start things, when we stop, that's where our followers will do. Mm. Wow. Wow. You have really elaborated. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> you have really elaborated this. Uh, uh, that, that <laughs> these are deep, <laughs> deep words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So if I if I meet a uh, whiskey, yeah, maybe I, maybe we grew up together. I mean, there's one. Then let me not mention name. There's one of the the secular artists who was my who was a boy when I was growing up. Yeah. If I meet him. And I decide to take a picture with him because I will get more likes. Yeah. I will have more views. I can mm. even say I want to use it to preach Jesus. You see, there's no, I have not seen. It. Not all things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. It's not expedient. Yeah. Yeah. And I have church members who have struggles. Mm. If I can identify with him publicly, my church member will go to his club. Mm. If I sing the good line of his song and stop at the ones that I cannot handle, my followers will take it for that. Because the danger of followership is that where leaders stop, that's where they start. Mm. Mm. If a leader points a gun, the members will shoot it. If they raise a bow, the members will shoot an arrow. Mm. So we have to be careful what we sanction, what we validate. I didn't mean it, but there's, there's a, a boomerang, there's a ripple effect which continues where it stops. Mm. <laughs> it's meant to have stopped, but it continues because that's what it is. Mm. And that is, and on the other hand, is a subtle plan of the enemy to get to us. That's true. I'm telling you. That's true. Adam stood. When the serpent was communicating with, with Eve, her husband was there. Hmm. It was just a simple conversation. Everything we permit permeates us and pervades us. Mm. Anything we allow dominates us. Mm. I am I'm, I'm, I'm very current. I like being sociable. But there are things I cannot deal with because we are the, I'm, a, I'm of a different order. Yeah. I, I don't sing secular songs. I don't I don't play with it because I know in, in my house we don't watch secular music at all. Mm. And I don't miss it because I've passed it. I know that I mean, have you seen secular music videos? It's I can't handle it. Mm. And if I can handle it, 
There are people who cannot handle it. Pastor Sam, <laughs> my friend from, my friend, my dad, brother, and friend from Birmingham. Good to see you, sir. Sure. Now, <laughs> so the things we allow, they dominate us. Mm. Mm. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. I, I have this question for you. Uh, I study in Nehemiah 3, 10 to 11. I will read it. It says, I also learned that the portions assigned to the Levites had not been given to them, and that the Levites and musicians responsible for the service had gone back to their own fields. So I received right. the officials and asked them, why is the house of God neglected? Then I called them together and stationed That's them right. at their post. So, what's your interpretation of this passage? Because I realized that... Oh, I, you, I, I, have preached, you, I have preached from that text. Yeah. Let me tell you, yeah. we need Nehemiah's. The, you see, Nehemiah is a rebuilder of broken down walls. Yes. The original, that's why I am of the school of thought that musicians should be honored and that the music ministry is part of the priesthood. I will explain. Mm -hmm. I'm a student of church history. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in the history of the church, under uh, the Episcopal Papa Excellence, yeah. which was a greedy setup of church administration that separated the top caliber of church leadership from the rest. That was where the trouble started. Of course, previous manifestations before that time. All my jargons, what am I trying to say? According to David's tabernacle, you see, the tabernacle of David is one of the most powerful system of the kingdom. Hmm. I just started teaching it. You know, I'm still building it gradually because everything is in the David's tabernacle. The church structure is in David's tabernacle. Mm. And watch this. According to the priesthood order, it was in Episcopal by excellence and other greedy developmental structures of church history and systems that separated a pastor can be paid, but a musician cannot be paid. Because we feel, we define by saying the pastor is priesthood, but the musician is not priesthood. That's not in the Bible. Hmm. Because in the Levitical order, the priest comprises of the teaching priest and the singing priest. Hmm. And they both belong to the priesthood. Hmm. If that is the case, then whatever, if is good that the man of God be honored for teaching it right, the singer should be honored for singing it right. Then somebody mm. asked me, if musicians are paid, mm. why can't ushers be paid? I said, now you are taking it far. Because you have to understand the, the, uh, uh, um, the specificity of the priesthood office in mm. the sense that what is required to be a musician is not what is required. You can, you can make an usher in one service Stand up, direct people to that, but you cannot make a musician in one service. Hmm. It is one office of the church that requires skill to be able to dispense, and it must be honored. Hmm. It must be honored. And from the David Tabernacle system, there is provision within the income of the church to take care of not only the teaching priest, but also the singing because you're a priest. Yeah. Yeah. We have our order, but you are also in the cater. Mm. 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 <laughs> Am I saying something right here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, you are really eating, eating the meal. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so thank you very much for, for really expatiating this because i realized that you know most most of the time you know this is being separated and what happened in this passage is still happening these days and i think that's, that's why right. most musicians 
most gospel artists and some of them they go astray. Because so we like, need we need Nehemiah's. Yeah. The assignment of the of Nehemiah is to come and rebuild. Hmm. The strength of the body bearers have decayed and we cannot build so there's much rubbish. Hmm. We have to be able to recognize hmm. all of this. And you see, when there is order, there will be increase. I believe that when we put things in that right perspective and take care of not only the teaching priest, but the singing priest, yeah. there will be increase. Hmm. There will be increase. The Lord will bless us. And you see, I've not seen anything that draws the attention of financial supply like giving worship its place. Mm. Because there's a strong connect between our worship and our wealth. Mm. That's why Lucifer said to Jesus, if you will, when he was going to negotiate the wealth of the world with him, mm. what was the offer? It was worship. Mm. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much. I want to ask our viewers, please follow us on Woodcliffe platform. Follow Pastor Craig Adams too, and myself. That's the Kyle of the Holy Soji. Uh, if you have any question for Pastor Corey Adams before he leaves, he has actually shared a lot. There are a lot of areas, deep areas that most, <laughs> most men of God you know, don't want to talk about, which has really <laughs> you know, opened up. <laughs> and I really, I really want to appreciate you, sir. I celebrate the grace of God upon you, and I thank appreciate you, very you much. for actually sharing with us today. I want to ask you viewers if you have any question before we close this program, please feel free to ask. Pastor Corey is going to answer you. Feel free, just type it here, and you know we we answer the question. So just have a few minutes to do that before we round up this program. And if you don't have any question, please just let me celebrate Pastor Corey Adam. Just celebrate him. He has really educated us so much, you know, in various areas, you know, it's in Thank you. Thank yeah. you. My pleasure. <laughs> so why they are trying to tell their question if they have any, is there anything, you know, that you feel that we still need to know that we have not shared in this? Okay. Someone just asked a question. Uh, she says, okay, Sister Shade King, thank you. It's, she said, what, what is the place of honor, honorarium as an artist? The place of honorarium is that it has its place. The okay. Bible says that um, they that wait on the altar should be partakers of the altar. Yeah. So, uh, we call it honorarium, whatever what whatever name you call it. Uh, uh, um, love seed, love offering. Yeah. Um, well, we have to strike a balance. While I am speaking from the perspective of what the Bible is saying, okay. the artist also, you see, for you to be able to meet with God, there has to be a level of faith. Yeah. So while we are talking about what is right to be done, which we recognize in the church. The artist also needs to be able to develop faith to work with God. And I, we have testimonies of artists who have taken such step of faith and God, and they are living supernatural. I mean, I have testimonies of artists around me who are doing better than some pastors financially. Mm. and is not by honorarium that they fix for themselves. Mm. But I cannot, I will not use one person's instance to establish as a general rule for the rest because every man will be fully persuaded mm. what your faith can handle. But what I will encourage is every artist must have a faith walk. Don't put money first mm. even when you are hungry mm. because that was what happened to Esau. He had a justifiable reason to let go of his birthright because he was hungry. Mm. Mm. And what I tell people is, Jacob cooked a meal he wanted to eat. He wasn't cooking for Esau. Mm. 
He was hungry. Jacob was hungry. If he wasn't hungry, he would not have cooked that meal. Mm -hmm. So there were two hungry people. Mm. But one was wise, the other was foolish. Jacob cooked the meal that Esau ate. But Jacob was ready to be hungry and secure a future. Mm. If we act based on impulse, you will insult pastors. You will even slap some pastors. Mm. Because you will need because some pastors will agree to pay you a hundred thousand. They will drop fifty thousand after administration. They'll say, We'll see you later. That is very wrong. But two wrongs can never make a right. So your faith work and total dependency on God will have to meet you halfway when people disappoint you. But I am telling you, every man, even apart from pastor to the local assembly, I'm an itinerant minister. I preach around and I travel around. And sometimes you meet disappointment. I don't charge, even when they say, oh, what do you think your honorarium should be? No, as you are, as God has laid it on your heart. Mm. But I preached in one city outside Nigeria, in God's own country, and preached revival for three days and there was no honorarium. And then I, and I did not complain. And then I traveled to another city. And one individual that I did not preach for, who is not, gave me what was more than all, that like more than what seven churches gave me because wow. I decided to look to God. Let me tell you, there are, there are gospel artists that are doing so financially well because they made the Lord. You see, anyone that is going to walk with God or work for God has to be able to live by faith. Mm. Without faith, you cannot please God. And you cannot live because the just shall live by faith. So without faith, the just singer cannot live. Can and many you? times, many times we're expecting people to do for us what we should wait on God to do for us. And that's where there's a problem. Mm, okay. So just in that regard, I just want to really chip in a question. I think we have like three more minutes to, to go. Yeah. My question is that one of the challenges that artists normally have when it comes to this issue of honorarium and this work of faith <laughs> is that they believe that, you know, as an artist, most of the time when you want to go and minister, you are not going alone. So yeah. you, you have band members that you want to go with. So these people do this stuff professionally. You know, they need to go to studio for rehearsals. And they like they spend money even to come before they could show up with their band to minister. They spent a lot because some of these musicians that do the stuff professionally, some of them charge. So how do we balance this? Even though you want to work by faith, you have some members that <laughs> who are band members yeah. who are See, ready to I'm, collect I'm, money. I'm a, I'm a pastor. Yeah. At the same time. I, I will not call myself a gospel artist, mm -hmm. but I am in the industry. I'm, I'm like a gospel artist. Mm -hmm. I know I identify there is nothing in the gospel music mm -hmm. ministry that I am not aware, exposed to. And I have walked past with people. Mm -hmm. And I know how challenging it is. But number one, it is possible. Okay. Number two, it is working. Okay. It is possible. It is workable. Number three, what we need is enjoying where we are on the way to where we are. Hmm. Sometimes a church cannot take care of all your bank members. Hmm. You just need the wisdom. You see, sometimes an artist wants to have it all. Sometimes you need to just go with soundtrack if you don't want to be hungry. Or get your band members to get upset. Mm. Sometimes you need to engage the church you are going to minister to say, "Oh, I just want to know what your what your uh, because I'm coming with a band. Do you want me to?" And you see, you have to be. There's a way you will talk, and they will misunderstand you because you see, we need to. Uh, this is for another time. We need to talk about 
how to maintain relationship. What yeah. most gospel artists lack uh -huh. is how to maintain relationship with pastors. Yeah, I'm so sorry. That one that. is a story for another day. I would like to talk about it. Uh, there are ways. Can, can we come back? To Do you have more time? It's going up. No, in the not today. <laughs> we are, not we've today. Done.